keep those audiences coming, the big names are taking even bigger risks, pulling bigger rabbits out of even bigger hats. Tonight, we get a rare look behind the curtain. Oh, this is like really detailed here. In Las Vegas, the capital of a billion dollar entertainment industry, the city where extreme magic sells. There's David Copperfield, worth an estimated $800 million, reportedly selling more tickets than any solo performer ever. He's walked through the Great Wall of China, even made the Statue of Liberty disappear. And yeah, that's me, on stage right there with the magic man himself, power tools, hard hat and all, making my debut as a magician sidekick, as Copperfield shrinks, shrinks, and shrinks himself into almost nothing, an illusion that mystifies a packed house. Even Copperfield admits he too has had to step up his game in the face of fierce competition. I wonder if like how far you push yourself to make it better. Is it to the point where it's dangerous? There is danger. You take educated risks, you have backup plans, but things do go wrong. Things do screw up, you know? Uh, you're depending on lots of people who you trust, and they're smart people, and they're really well-trained, but sometimes things do go wrong. Five years ago, one of Copperfield's assistants was severely injured on stage, pulled into a giant fan blade. Is there a risk when it comes to safety and having to raise the bar constantly? I think there could be a risk, but, but safety is our number one priority. MGM Grand President Scott Sabilla was happy to talk about Copperfield's success, but reluctant to discuss two recent stunts gone wrong in two MGM Grand properties on the Las Vegas Strip. One Cirque du Soleil performer trying to balance on a wire fell to her death at the MGM this summer. A casino publicist cutting our interview short. Is it safe? Never it's very safe. Not this is not safe to cover. All right. so we're gonna to cover everything in our story though so I mean if you want to just elaborate on the point that you're making and just this past month another Cirque du Soleil performer at the Aria Resort and Casino was hospitalized following a stunt on the wheel of death so line of questioning. Get to the topic which is David Copperfield so you can't answer a question about Cirque du Soleil I guess not <laughs> <laughs> no not even one question huh we need to stick to David Copperfield okay is that just the I don't know the, one of the risks of being a magician do you have to go that far to, to sell I think, tickets? Well, I don't think it's to sell tickets. I, I think it's a matter of you know pushing your own boundaries of, of, of uh, what you expect of yourself. You know, the audience, of course, it's a big respect to the audience to really treat them to not the same old thing. You want to respect them and, and show them something that maybe will take them to another another level. It's a, it really has to come from has to come from here. They closely guard the secrets to their success. I had to promise not to reveal anything I witnessed under the bright lights of Copperfield's magic show. It's a ceremonial signing of the secrecy agreements. I have to sign this. Yes. What am I signing away you here? I'll read it first, read it. Signing away. Here's what I can say. If it looks easy, it's not. Oh, this is like really detailed here, okay. Same thing again, ready guys? Even the slightest move matters. Pretty damn good for a 10 minute training purpose. Can we do one more time? Sure. One wrong flick of the hand from me, and I could lose a hand or mess the whole trick up. Okay, I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I see my power tool right there. I'm going to meet you right here. Okay. And uh, you're going to watch some of the show. I'm going to rush you back here and uh, don't screw up. <laughs> don't mess up, okay? <laughs> Words of advice from David Copperfield. With that, it's showtime. secret Copperfield is willing to share, a look inside his usually off-limits, very bizarre, collection of magic memorabilia. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> All 40,000 square feet. Wow. <laughs> like, I'm not the first person who said that. <laughs> Whoa. These are spikes that I uh, hung from a straitjacket with burning ropes. Yeah, I guess that's true. If you build a set like this, what do you do with it? Do you want to keep it? Mostly, I, I keep everything, pretty much. You keep everything. Yeah. Are you a hoarder? A little bit. Magic hoarder? Yes, yeah, celebrity hoarder. <laughs>
So that's me getting into a safe. I and the safe remember that. implodes. Come watch your step over here. There's the largest Houdini collection outside of the Library of Congress. Do you see all of this stuff and find inspiration in it for new Sometimes. We, we did some escape things that Houdini inspired, but uh, his really, uh, his legacy is, is doesn't need my help. That famous saw. And this, the room that really freaked me out. Is this creepy at all to you? I have to admit, a it's a little people, creepy. A lot, a lot of people are creeped out by this, but you know, people really love it too. The man who has perfected the disappearing act has no plans to disappear anytime soon. So when do you finally say, okay, it's my last show? Never. Really? Never. No. They'll carry me out in a, a gurney on, on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> well, we know it's a trick or not. We'll just never hear from <laughs> they you may, again. They may, they may. <laughs> I may not have left. You know?